countries at war, you always had a lot of propaganda in every conflict. And it's part of our job. What happened here is that the photographer became invisible, so you get a sense that they've forgotten that someone's taking pictures. When you work, it's with a sort of filter. You don't think, how can I save this person? OK, we've got massive bleeding. I'm in so much pain. Please help me. Hello and welcome to France in Focus. I'm Olivia salazar winspear and this week's show is coming to you from Bayeux in the Calvados department of Normandy. This was the first major town to be liberated by the Allies in 1944, following the D-Day landings, which put an end to the Nazi occupation of France. And that wartime heritage continues today, since it's also the home of a series of awards, the Prix Bayeux, recognizing excellence in war reporting. I'm joined by Le Monde journalist and editor Rémi Ordon, who won the Correspondence Prize here in 2000 and 2012. Hello, Rémi. Thanks for joining us. Hello. Now, there are 10 prizes here covering journalism in TV, radio and print press. For you, what do you think are the most important things that the judges are looking for in these reports? As a reporter, what I'm looking for is, uh, you know, to, to try to tell an important story in a fair and precise and accurate way. And the second thing I think is the way you do it as a writer, you know, a good story is an interesting story, well written. And as well as awards, there's a series of screenings, conferences and exhibitions like this one, which is called uh, The World's Battlefield, and it documents the situation in Afghanistan. Now, you reported from that country in the early years of the 21st century. How did you see the situation there at that time? There is war going on in Afghanistan for 40 years, four decades this year. So that's a specific story, Afghanistan, going through many wars. Uh, I've been there yeah, right after 9-11, and uh, when Al-Qaeda attacked New York and DC, and uh, we were expecting, uh, you know, some kind of response from the US. So, but when we covered that war, I was far, far, far from thinking that there would be kind of covering the same war 18 years after. But all these post 9-11 wars across Central Asia, Middle East, and parts of Africa, uh, of course, I was far from thinking I would cover these wars of jihad and these wars, these American wars, uh, 18 years later. Well, as well as uh, presenting visitors with an immersive experience of their photography like this one, for some reporters, Bayeux is an opportunity to connect with people who wouldn't necessarily encounter their work in the pages of a newspaper. The Disturb Collective has a guerrilla approach to photojournalism, pasting up images in the streets and running outreach programmes in schools where they shine a light on their profession and hope to inspire a new generation of reporters. Let's take a look. In this chapel, close to the famous Bayer Tapestry, Médecins Sans Frontières has put on a show. The exhibition, titled Gaza, A Population on the Edge, highlights the plight of Palestinians who've been protesting at the Israeli border for the past 18 months. When I was hit by the I was standing in front of the I felt like an electrocution. I had the impression that my was detached from my body. But how can we interpret these images without the direct testimony of victims? And how can we better understand this 70-year-old conflict, which now impacts all parts of daily life? To help youngsters, this year's festival has called on the services of Disturb. This journalist's collective usually pins photos up in the streets to grab the attention of passers-by but they also work in schools. This is a photo taken by Virginie Anguyen in a Palestinian refugee camp in the Gaza Strip. 
It's part of a program that we run with students in Normandy in collaboration with the Bayou Festival to bring media teaching and topical discussions directly into schools. Once the photos are up, the question and answer session can begin. Do you know why the children put their hands up to their ears and mouths like that? When psychologists work with children, they work a lot on their expression. In an age when youngsters are bombarded with images on social media, lessons like this one help them to look deeper, verify their sources and distinguish between truth and fake news. As you mentioned, in countries like Syria and Iraq, over the last two decades, the jihadist threat has become the dominant story. Now, when covering that, for you, what are the major challenges, both physically in terms of safety and also ethically in terms of how you report that story? Well, we try to report the jihadist story uh, as well as we can. The problem is the access, of course, because they don't want to talk to us. And uh, so we don't have access to their territory, or we don't have access to interviews even. Um, but fortunately, they write a lot. Uh, so we try to understand them by their writing, by their propaganda, by their videos, by everything. Of course, access is a key issue. But it's like a totalitarian regime, you know, it's nothing new. I mean, some regimes, some governments, some armies don't want any journalists moving around freely. With the jihadis, it's the same, uh, and they even kill us. Not, on, not so much because we are journalists, because we are part of the enemy. Well, journalistic ethics, uh, accuracy and responsibility towards their sources are, of course, at the forefront of any reporter's mind when working in the field. But for those on the front line, safety is the major issue. Conditions in conflict zones are difficult to gauge, and specialist training is essential. One facility here in France which prepares journalists for those situations is called Le Manoir. And during the Prix Bayeux, its staff have relocated here to Normandy to offer a course for freelance photojournalists. France 24's reporters went to find out more. Ow, it hurts, it hurts. Skills that can save a life. Okay, ça c'est une plus bloc. You okay, can you talk? Yeah, yeah. So I'll wet it a bit. Now it's okay, it's moist enough. These journalists are learning how to come to each other's aid in a hostile situation. It hurts, it hurts. Okay, okay end of the exercise. I see there's a hand over there. What do you want to do? Do you know? No. Okay, we'll go over that later. They have five days to train in near real life scenarios. Because once in the field, they can't afford to make mistakes. The compression dressing has two functions. Their teacher is a former Navy parachutist. He lost several of his comrades in arms in Afghanistan. They'll have 12 hours of face-to-face -face training in which they'll learn how to treat avoidable deaths such as hemorrhages, chest trauma and airway obstruction, which are the three main causes of death in hostile environments. 11 reporters have been selected for this course, paid for by Bayeux Award partners. They regularly work in Turkey, Iraq or Syria. I'm just glad nothing has happened to me so far because I wasn't ready. I was in one incident where I think if I had the right equipment, I might have been able to save someone. The person died that day and I didn't even have a first aid kit. It's important to pass on the basics of what we've learned. It's not the same as a course, but tourniquets or compression dressings. Learning how to save lives. OK, get up. Don't go too fast. But also how to protect themselves from aggression and stay in shape. We had about 10 kilos on our backs. The Kurds had their own stuff to worry about, so we weren't going to bother them. And the terrain is up and down all night, so after an hour, you're dead. I arrived at the very end of the Iraq war in summer of 2017, just before the capture of the old town of Mosul. Friends had warned me, prepare yourself, it will be very hot and you'll be wearing a vest and helmet. So I started running in the forest, and it's lucky I did. For these freelancers, Talking and sharing with each other 
Mastering orientation and cybersecurity could be the difference between life and death. 80 journalists died last year, but this course will leave these reporters better equipped for the hazards of the job. We've seen this term fake news emerge uh, recently, often referring to a journalistic point of view that doesn't match a political position to discredit that uh, journalist. But for those reporters doing serious, in-depth work, what would you say are the major obstacles to objectivity, neutrality, and ensuring factual coverage? It's, it's kind of funny for us, I think, this fake news thing now, because in these conflicts and these wars, nothing changed. You always had propaganda, you know, First World War, with, uh, you know, propaganda everywhere on every side. But this fake news thing, it's in our countries, free and democratic. You know, when you see that uh, on the Washington Post website that Mr. Trump has been lying more than 12,000 times to Americans since election, you know, it's, it's kind of, that's a new world. Eh? And in the same time, he's claiming that everything we are doing, like, I mean, they are doing New York Times, Washington Post, and so on, is fake news. So it's reversed, you know, it's, it's, that's a new crazy thing in this world. In the countries we cover, and countries at war, you always had a lot of propaganda in every conflict. And it's part of our job to dig into this, all these propagandas and find some pieces of truth. You know, that's what we do, but that's in every conflict and uh, it's going on forever. Mme. Yaldon, thank you very much for thank joining you. us. As well as highlighting coverage of contemporary conflicts, Bayeux also honors those who've sacrificed their lives while reporting. Since the end of the Second World War, more than 2,000 journalists have been killed, and this memorial pays tribute to them. This year, the names of Jamal Khashoggi, the Saudi reporter assassinated in Turkey, and Lyra McKee, who was shot in Northern Ireland, will be added to this list. Well, that's all for this week's show. Do join us here again for France in Focus. That's here on France 24.